Okay, so I want to take a little bit of time to go over another linear data structure. This one's going to be a stack. I think this is particularly my favorite actual linear data structure because it's used pretty frequently in low-level programming assembly and stuff like that. So I end up using it pretty frequently since I do a lot of uh, lower or older hardware. So I want to say lower end hardware. For the time, it was pretty high end. Um, but a lot of low-level assembly will end up utilizing a stack in order to store data in a particular order. And that's one of its actual strongest suits, is keeping a particular order the way it went in should be the way it comes out, essentially. And we'll get into how that works and kind of the cases and when you want to use it, the differences between a linked list and it, and also what makes a stack actually a stack as opposed to just a modified linked list. So without further ado, let's go ahead and swap over. And here we are. So, stack is going to be, again, data structure, non-primitive, linear, and somewhere in between an array and a linked list. So an array is a statically sized, contiguous memory data structure, whereas a linked list is going to be a non-contiguous memory, dynamically allocated linked list. So stack, uh, they can utilize contiguous memory. If you want to, you can make one with an array, or you can make some with a linked list where it has more dynamic memory where you're actually allocating different objects and nodes and different points in memory. The one we're going to use is more in line with a linked list as opposed to an array. Both work just fine. For the low-level stuff I deal with, it's dealing with memory directly, so it's contiguous for sure, but in our case, we're going to be doing a dynamically allocated one with linked lists. So, what are they? So just like a linked list, it is a linear abstract data structure. So essentially your memory goes in one way and should come out the exact same way. So it's a linear way. These are going to be a single direction as opposed to linked list, which can be multi-directional. And it is going to be more restricted than just a singly linked list because we are going to apply a LIFO programming principle to it, which is last in, first out. So essentially a stack, the most realistic explanation I can give you is a stack of plates. So let's say this is a plate, this is a plate, this is a plate, this is a plate. You can see I'm putting one on top of another one. And I want to take one off, I'm going to take one off from the top. So when you put one on, it's essentially pushing something to the stack, and then we pop something off of the top. So it comes in that specific order. So this is the first one in. It should be the last one out, or the other way around, last one in, first one out. If, if you see it being called Philo, that is also fine. So first one in should be the last one out, last one in should be the first one out. They're interchangeable, but most of the time you see LIFO. So last one in is the first one out, so on and so forth, until finally we get to an empty stack. That's it. That's what it basically means to be LIFO. Again, Philo, same thing. If you hear one or the other, they mean the exact same thing. Now, just like a linked list, we will start with our node class, which is just going to have a single integer for data, a pointer for next, our default constructor, which is going to be zero and a null pointer, and then a more elaborate one that takes in some integer data to associate with our elements. And then finally, we'll move on here to our other class, which is going to be the actual stack class, which is very similar to our linguist class, except that we are going to utilize only two private variables, one being the top and the other one being the length. We use the length for the linked list just to keep track of the elements inside of it. Same thing here. Top is going to be very, very similar to our head and tail. This indicates the top of the stack, essentially. So what I mean by that is let's say we have this we're going to put something on this is a new top put another thing on this is now a new top so it actually represents the last element that was put in the stack so we're going to continuously update that as we add and remove data and then again we have our constructor and deconstructor and a few public methods push pop these are how we insert and remove data and then peak and display stack, and that's gonna be more interfacing with actually visualizing the data. So first thing, is gonna be adding nodes to our stack. We can do that by pushing. All we do is just like 
with our linked list, when we want to insert data, we're gonna create a new node in memory. So hence a new node data. So it is going to take in an integer value, push our new node to the stack. When we do that, we need to make sure we increase the length to keep track of that. The way this works, it says point our current node to the top. So let's say we have a stack here. It's completely empty. And then we want to create this new node in memory. And let's say let's give it a value of five. So this would still be our top. It's now a null pointer. It doesn't really have any association. It's just the part of our stack that's been initialized as an object. So currents next, which in this case are our nodes are gonna have like, let's say they have a next six points down. And I'll explain why in just one moment as we kind of go through doing this. So current next is gonna to point to the top. So this five is gonna come here, it's gonna to point to our top. All right, and the top will now equal current. So this top is now associated with this. And let's say we want to push, create six. So current, which is our new data, is going to, its next pointer is going to point to the top, which is now this five. So we're going to do this, six here, and then we reset the top to this new value. So you can see how we're creating a stack here. We have five and six, and we're constantly resetting what the top is as we do this. So if we put a seven, and current next one, I'll point to our new top. I didn't put a P there, I'm sorry. And constantly update it, and maybe an eight here, and so on and so forth. So a little bit differently visualized than a linked list, but very, very similar in structure. Now for popping, this is removing data. So just like with the linked list, we need to make sure it's not empty. If it's empty and we try to delete something, you're probably gonna hit um, a seg fault and have a bad time by trying to access memory that isn't there. So do a check to make sure it's not empty and you should be good to go. And then, for this, we want to simply decrement the length. Then we want to set a node that is associated with our top. So let's go ahead and set up, um, let's say, our five and our six from earlier. That should be pretty easy. Five and six, here's our top. Okay, so our node is now going to be associated with top, so node is here and then we want to say top equals top next so top is now currently pointed this so it's next is five so this is a new top and then we delete node and simply just do this and that's it that's pretty much all we have to do not a big deal pretty simple and then we just move on so that would be inserting and removing data that's the only thing that we have to deal with when it comes to adjusting data in the stack. Now with linked list, we had six different functions. I'd be inserting at the start, inserting at the end, inserting at a specific index. And then for moving, we had three more that was removing at the start, the end, and also a specific index. Now that's the versatility of a linked list as opposed to the more restrictive nature of a stack. Stacks have to follow a LIFO implementation, whereas a linked list doesn't have any restrictions. So a linked list by nature should be typically more complex than a stack. So you can add as much functionality and flexibility as you want, but that comes at a cost at, it's expensive for memory, and then it's also expensive on how you interface with that, the number of functions that you have, the complexity it is for your users to use it, as opposed to a stack, which is you push data in and you pop data off, and that's it. Now. Not every situation can be handled by a stack, so it might help to have a more restrictive linked list as opposed to dedicating your work to a stack. So it's just going to be kind of a use case, weigh the pros and cons of the two different situations of which one you should use. Interfacing, we have a peak, which is just going to be returning the data of our topmost element. So Again, if it's empty, we're just gonna tell the user it's empty in return. And then for 
this particular one, it's a void function. I'm not actually returning any data. So I'm just gonna see out our top nodes data. Let the user know what it is and call it a day. If you wanna make it an integer or whatever node type you're working with in your stack, that's perfectly fine. Just whatever helps your use case. And for display stack, this is the exact same thing as our linked list. It's just structured a little bit different formatting. So again, we're gonna have current as top. And so we have a seven pointing to uh, eight pointing to a nine pointing to our base, okay? So this is a top. So when you create current, it's not a new node, it's just associated with this. So we're gonna loop until current is a null pointer, which would be our base basically. And then we're gonna see out bracket, current data bracket inline. So in this case, what we'd have is seven. Current is now gonna be here for the next one. So let's do cur eight. Oops. Nine. Now current is gonna be a null pointer, and then it's gonna kick out and be done. So we end up with seven, eight, nine. And again, I just have it a little bit differently structured for my formatting, so it actually has a vertical aspect because you can see we're actually doing end lines, which are new lines. And it, it's more representative of what a stack would look like, so it gives you a better visualization. And that's pretty much it in terms of the actual programming aspect. So in this case, stacks are very, very similar to linked lists in terms of their actual linear structure, but you can see that there's a lot more restriction in terms of how we actually work with them, how we deal with the data, and what we have access to as we work with them. We only have access to the top data. You can't really get access to the entire stack without looping through it. Um, and I mean, technically you have to do that with linked lists, but there's more versatility in that you can link, you can loop through into an index. And technically, yes, you can do that with a stack, but at that point, that's violating more of the actual programming principle of what you'd want to do with it because the whole point of it is to have the LIFO restriction. Now, if you want to do it just to kind of actually visualize what's in the stack, it's perfectly fine. But in terms of like, oh, remove the data at index three, that's just the linked list. That's all that is because at that point, that's not LIFO anymore. So it's just going to be in terms of does your use case have an appropriate way of dealing with the stack. If not, just go to the linked list and you'll be perfectly fine. So hopefully that explains what stacks are and the differences between a linked list and a stack, where you'd wanna use them, where you wouldn't wanna use them. And hopefully aside from that, everything is pretty understandable. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.